County had identified a couple of alternative routes that they're evaluating. Also looking at what can we do to Highway 130 itself, especially in the area where there are cracks, you know, to be able to test to make sure it's safe and then um, identify mitigation actions that we can take um, so that um, vehicles can travel over that part of the highway. Is that the preferred option to be able to reopen 130? Is that, yeah. Well, we do know that it's important um, to maintain transportation so that uh, the residents would be able to uh, go to work and take other actions that they, they need to, to um, try and get back to some sense of normalcy. So is DOT testing now to see whether that's a viable option on 130 specifically? Well, they definitely are looking at, and they had a couple designs from the last lava flow uh, that they were prepared to implement uh, if it had extended longer. Uh, and so they are dusting off those old plans and um, kind of talking to uh, experts uh, to make sure that it would be viable and that it would actually help the situation. There was uh, bridges involved, as I recall. That's, that's sort of correct. Thing, yeah. They, yeah. You know, looking at... Um, bridges, things that they can lay over um, the compromised sections of the highway to be safe, to assure that um, vehicles could, uh, trans cars and things could go over it without uh, putting the public at risk. And how about any increases in state aid, uh, uh, additional guard assistance or other, other? Certainly we are prepared. I can get the, the current numbers we have. Uh, I know the last time I checked, there were 75 guards people uh, involved in this um, event. Uh, I know that there are additional uh, requests for services, especially as uh, the duration of the event extends. Um, Hawaii County Police and firefighters uh, have been on um, extremely long shifts already, so we definitely are looking at what uh, and how the Guard can support um, the county civil defense personnel. Uh, and as you know, we've uh, had people here from Oahu and Maui as well. Uh, so it is a statewide effort in terms of ensuring that we have the people uh, on the ground that can keep the community safe. There was a, sorry, there was a lot of concern about geothermal. There have been additional steps taken to secure that site with the new fisher at Lanipuna. As you know, we uh, have put together uh, a team of experts that are finalizing uh, the, the plan to mitigate the risk. Uh, we should be uh, having uh, an announcement on that shortly. We, uh, I think we are working through the final details of what we believe we need to do to keep um, to mitigate the risk uh, that is presented by the geothermal facility. What yeah. is the risk exactly? Um, the concern uh, it's it's two two big risks I guess, and we've already alleviated the first one uh, was the pentane and the sixty thousand gallons of pentane that we uh, have moved across. Uh, the second risk really is if the, the wells themselves are compromised and there's an unrestricted release of gases from the geothermal well and the most um, lethal one would be uh, hydrogen sulfide. Uh, so we are looking at uh, actions that we can take to assure that that doesn't happen. Uh, we do have an expert. Um, we have people in from uh, California as well as uh, FEMA has made uh, geochemists and other uh, personnel available to the team. They are finalizing, like I said, they are finalizing uh, the mitigation plan as we speak and we hope to have uh, a specific announcement later on today. There was discussion about some equipment that needed to be flown in from California, I guess, to inject water into the wells. Is yes, that happening? I've actually already authorized uh, that uh, expenditure. They, um, they talked about it last night. Uh, we do believe that it's important to have that equipment here on site uh, to reduce the risk of, um, you know, to the public. Uh, our first and foremost priority is to ensure that we can keep the community safe. Uh, if that means that we have to fly in and expedite uh, the equipment, then we're going to do it. Has it lifted off yet? Do you have to know? Uh, I don't have the specific departure time. I know that they uh, were making arrangements for that to happen. I definitely, we can definitely get that information out to you. Coming back to the roads for just a second, um, is there a construction time or date start specific to, that they'll be starting work on that? Well, they are out uh, inspecting the roads right as we speak, and really it would only uh, be necessary if they find that the roads are not safe. Um, you know, we, uh, because of where the lava flow was headed and the fissures uh, seem to be approaching uh, Highway 130, 
they felt that it's better to just shut it down at this point. Obviously, as we look into a prolonged event, we do want uh, transportation to get back to normal as best as we can. Uh, and so Ed uh, and his crew will be on the ground today to inspect Highway 130 uh, with the intention that if it's safe, that we could reopen it immediately. If there are areas that are not safe, then we would look at what specific action uh, would be necessary to create bridges or other kinds of support that would allow the road to be passable. Governor, just to clarify, I'm sorry, there's a lot of roads and a lot of different numbers to throw around, but Highway 130 has been closed for about uh, two weeks right. because of that, and that's the one you're talking about? Bridging? Well, they're, they're looking at both, right? They, they ultimately want to reopen 130, but 132 is also closed. So, you know, the mitigation actions would work, the bridges would work on either highway, uh, obviously. So, you know, they are inspecting um, what is necessary so that they can restore um, routes to as many people as possible and you know on on that front some of that might be establishment of temporary roads and bypass roads uh, that would allow us to um, allow uh, the residents um, and others back into the communities some of it might be construction of bridges and things that uh, would go over the existing roadway that would allow um, cars to pass and your main concern over the air quality and the sulfur dioxide I know we've spoken to a lot of residents concerned about not being able to get masks or respirators, anything you would say to them on that? Well, I can tell you that um, the safety of the communities is the number one concern. We just talked about it in the briefing this morning, you know, trying to get more monitoring equipment out, uh, be able to um, keep the community safe, keep them informed of what uh, the, the levels of the toxic uh, gases would be. Uh, definitely, that's a high priority for us. Uh, and once again, just in talking with the workers, uh, making sure that we can get appropriate equipment for the, those employees that actually will have to continue to work in the area, respirators, um, badges that would allow us to, um, to monitor uh, the employees' uh, exposure to the chemicals are very, very important as well. So we are uh, making efforts to get all of those uh, on the ground and deployed around the community so that um, they can be aware of what the, um, the reading levels are, uh, especially in, um, close to the subdivisions, uh, and then also to allow us to um, keep the community safe, uh, allow them to uh, live there and be as normal as can be, but be prepared to evacuate so that we have the information that we need if it is getting to be a risk to the uh, community that we uh, issue the evacuation orders uh, so that they, you know, they can get away from the toxic gases. So the state's working to get those sulfur di more sulfur dioxide monitors and respirators for employees who go in? Well, for those who would be exposed to the gases. For example, if we do have to construct bridges uh, in some of those areas and if there are uh, levels of exposure that we find would be unacceptable then we want them to be able to work in that environment in a safe way you know we don't anticipate that that uh, is necessary today but clearly if uh, if we are going to ask employees to be in the area we want to make sure that they have all the equipment to keep them safe Governor, is there any discussion on why the schools are still open when some people say the air quality is poor and the kids are experiencing trauma? Well, we are actually positioning a lot of the air, air monitoring equipment that we have close to the schools because obviously uh, that's um, a priority, I think, for the entire community. And generally, the schools are centrally located in those subdivisions. Uh, as we get more equipment, then we'll deploy them to other areas as well. And then any update on evacuation plans, of course, with the crater, the, the potential of that looming. Any update on the state's evacuation plans? I know there's been um, a shortage of, of places for people to go other than those shelters. Well, we do know that um, there has been an increase in the shelter use as we've announced uh, mandatory evacuations. Uh, last night there was more than 450, 484 in the Pahoa shelter and another uh, 25 in the uh, Keao shelter. You know, the, the shelter census um, kind of goes up and down depending on uh, where the flow is and where we've issued evacuation orders. We are preparing other shelters and we'll be announcing them as necessary. Uh, I think the, the most important um, thing to remember is that the shelters are pet friendly and so if they 
Uh, if the residents have uh, pets that they are concerned about, they certainly can bring them to the Pohoa and Keao uh, shelters. Uh, you know, we continue to work with the Red Cross to make sure that we have food, water, and other um, provisions to keep people safe uh, in those shelters. Coming to your schedule today? You planning to, to go inside or? Uh, no, you know, I'm going to be uh, heading back. Yeah, I, I came out here uh, explicitly to get a brief on uh, the mitigation efforts on uh, Puna Geothermal. Uh, and as I said, they are uh, very close to finalizing what that uh, mitigation plan would be. And uh, I'm certain they'll be making an announcement sometime today. So you're heading back now? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Governor. Thank so this you. focus was Pune Geothermal. This briefing. Oh, they, the no, it's a general, general. briefing. I general came. Briefing. I came for a specific yeah. oh, okay, briefing okay. on um, Pune Geothermal. Thermal, gotcha. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, folks. Safe travels.